How's it everybody? Money Shot here again and welcome back to Hawaii Crap Shooters. In this video, we have a special guest here, John G, one of our Hawaii Crap Shooter members. He used to be a resident here in Hawaii, which he recently moved to Las Vegas, but he's back here for a few days. And we're lucky to have him join us today and share with us his top table etiquette tips. So John, what, what table etiquette tips do you have for us and our viewers? Uh, let's see, probably the biggest tip is, of course, don't say seven while you're playing the game. Don't say seven, why yeah. not say seven? Always say red. Red? Yeah, seven's bad luck, um, unless you're a don't shooter. <laughs> but uh, we'll cover don't shooters a little bit in is a little it, bit. Is that more, you think craps players are that superstitious? Uh, yeah. yeah. The yeah. whole the whole game is a very superstitious game. So <laughs> and, and the more you play it, the more you'll realize that uh, it's a real thing. Because when you're playing, you'll see the same stuff over and over again, and people doing certain things, and it always turns out bad. All right. <laughs> Almost always. Number one, don't say the word seven on the craps table. Yeah, just refer to it as red. red. Every, all the dealers will know what you're talking about. Uh, probably my next tip would be if you're going to start playing, if you're not a, a seasoned player, is to learn how to play either on their free schooling that they give. Some casinos give you, they have like a small dice table and they'll offer classes where you can show up in the morning and they'll teach you how to play. Or you can also get on the internet and there's some free uh, websites where you can actually play for free and kind of learn what's going on with the crap staple. You don't want to go up and have the dealers there teach you or ask anybody on the table? All the, the dealers will, te will help you and they'll show you and actually some of the players will help you and show you. But the time to do it is not on a Friday or Saturday where there's a thousand people in the casino <laughs> and you're kind of getting in the way at that point. Go on an off day in the morning, that's usually the best time. Oh, okay. You think we're gonna piss off people if I go and I was a beginner and just... Well, yeah, most of the time on a craps table, everybody's getting pissed off about something. So <laughs> um, that would also be another tip is to try not to be mad at everybody. And <laughs> don't go play craps when you're mad. Right. Uh, if you're angry about something, if your significant other's giving you hard, hard times about something prior to you gambling, Probably don't go gamble, you're gonna lose. <laughs> you gotta be relaxed when you go to the craps table. That's a good tip, John. <laughs> Probably the most important tip. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so don't play when you're mad. Learn uh, with the casinos with their free lessons. That's good tips. Yeah, when you approach the craps table, if there's players there, you'll wanna be aware of what's going on at, on the table when you walk up. If you see somebody that's shooting, you don't want to crowd in next to them while they're shooting because you're going to bring them bad luck and it's it's bad table etiquette. If there's an open spot next to a shooter and you want that spot, then just take your casino card or maybe uh, your ID or whatever you have and just set it on the rail there and that'll save your spot, and then just kind of stand back until they're done shooting. Uh, what if I just leave my $100 chip on the rail? Well, you could. Um, as long as you're there <laughs> watching it, you're probably going to be okay. Um, that would also roll into the um, bathroom breaks. When you go on a bathroom break, if you have a rail full of chips, maybe you have $5,000 worth of chips up there, uh, probably not wise to leave it up there because the casino will try to watch your chips, but if somebody steals your chips, they're not gonna replace them. Right. So most of the time, if I take a bathroom break, I'll uh, leave five bucks up there and chips, some white chips or something, and I'll put everything else in my pocket. Right. And, and then I'll, I always tell the dealer or the stick man that I'll be right back. So they kind of have a heads up of what's going on. In my past experience, I've seen actually what they call the rail birds. If you haven't heard that term before, have you heard that term before, the rail birds? I have. So you'll see some of these guys crowd a busy table and when they place their bet, their other hand is just 
picking off chips from your rail. So there's a lot of, you gotta be aware of that. You gotta know where your chips at. The casinos will say they'll cover your chips and like, but what John said is they're not responsible for that money. Uh, they can put a towel or even at worst a napkin and someone can just co come by and, and just grab it and just take off and run, you know? So be alert, be aware of where your chips, especially if you have $5,000 in there. Right, it. and uh, a lot of times if you're at a rail, I mean, you have people you can trust, but you know what? The only person you can trust is yourself. So always stack your white chips, your low value chips on the ends. So if they do get there and can grab something, it's going to be a white chip instead of a high, high value chip. Right. So whenever John goes to the bathroom, I always can hear him when he's coming back because he had a whole pocket full ching, of ching, chips. Ching. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's if I'm on a good table. <laughs> Sometimes you don't have to worry about putting chips in your pocket. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, so that's uh, a real common thing that I actually see a lot of people do. They'll walk off and leave all their chips in the rail and it's kind of risky. Yeah, that's a good tip. Yeah. Uh, the other thing that I've noticed is when uh, people come to buy in, you always have the big spenders that want to come in with uh, $5,000 in $20 bills <laughs> and they want to see the, the pit boss put all that out there so everybody can see how much money they've got and it takes 10 minutes to buy in. So my big tip is don't buy in for that. If you're, if you're buying in for that, bring hundreds. Um, it used to be that you could go to the cashier window and buy your chips there, right. which I, most of the cashiers are right next to the craps table. So they're gonna rate you the same whether you buy in at the table or if you buy in at the cashier. Uh, they're going to see that you have five thousand dollars in chips, and they're going to make a note of that. But with COVID, I've found that they won't sell you chips at the cashier window, so you're going to be forced to go to the table and cash in. If you have, if you want to gamble, and you just have a pocket full of five dollar bills, my suggestion is to go to a slot machine, feed all your five dollar bills into that slot machine, push the cash out button, go to the ATM changer and get bigger bills and then go to the craps table. Yeah. Do you know the reason why they probably don't give sell you chips at the cashier's? Uh, the reason they gave, because I did that one day and it was a big problem, is because now that with COVID they're having to clean their chips. Oh, okay. So they don't want to sell chips at the window because of the cleaning issue. Oh, I see. Because most of the chips they take in at the window are all taken in a back room to be cleaned and if they have to pull some out, then they aren't cleaning them, is what they said. Okay. So, I mean, it makes sense. Yeah. So. So, don't buy in with a lot of money. <clears throat> when should they buy in? I mean. The, the time to buy in is not during the roll, even though I see that virtually every time I go to play craps. <laughs> uh, I see it from young people, old people. People are just inconsiderate. Uh, even if it's a hot roll, don't buy in until the person either makes their point or they seven out. And how would they know that? By what, they can look, watch the puck, right? Yeah, with the puck. Yeah, with the puck, so if you see it on the white, don't buy in. <laughs> don't buy in unless the person's right. made their point. Yeah, and, and when the puck they is pull up. all the dice back and they're getting ready to set up for a new point. That is the time to yeah. buy in. So watch the table before you go <clears throat> in. See, make sure the dice are in the middle, the puck is on off, and that's a good time to buy it, right? Yes. And it's also uh, another thing to remember is when you walk up especially and you're trying to, cat, to buy in, you want to make sure you don't put your hands in the table. Um, I think all of us have done this. Even I'll admit I've done it before. I haven't been paying attention. Your hand's in the table. Somebody's already shooting. Because mm -hmm. they move some deal, some stickmen will move the dice real fast. Mm -hmm. So you got to be aware of what's going on in the table. That's a good point. Sometimes it's not even the player's fault because they have action and the dealers are cutting chips, and the stickman passes the dice. So you know there's no way you got to pick up your money, but the dice are coming. So it's, you yeah. know, casinos make the mistake as well. Right? They do, and you really got to be aware. Uh, of what's going on, keep your hands out of the table. Um, if you're leaning on the rail like we are, 
um, and somebody's shooting into you, you need to be back behind the rail. Right. Is it if, if you're on their side, you can lean over, nobody's going to say anything because the dice are going away from you. Mm -hmm. So yeah. th that's a good tip. You could imagine a, a imaginary plexiglass, right? Yeah. And don't pass that. We talk about plexiglass in Vegas, but Plenty. if if you're away as as if a plexiglass is there, then you're, you know, even just a slight like a bill of your hat here, you can even throw off the shooter with that because now he's like, you're not in his shooting range, but mentally he's gonna try and avoid you, and then you don't want to be the guy who ruins a monster roll because you leaned over and to grab your drink off the rail. Some people grab their drink and put their head up there. So yeah, be aware of you not getting into the table and, and everyone just yelling at you once they don't say the word, but read out, right? Yeah, read. <laughs> the other thing is when somebody's shooting into you, you don't want to do late bets. Actually, no late bets at all. Uh, if the dice are out, don't bet because you're going to throw that dice shooter off. Uh, at the same time, if they're shooting into you towards your, where you're at, don't stack your chips up where their lane that they're shooting in is. Because the whole goal is that we're all here to win. So I mean, the only people that will stack chips like that are don't shooters. And you can't really be mad at them because that's part of that game. So you got to accept that they're going to be stacking towers of chips. They're going to be stacking it in the lane of the shooter because they want them to seven out. And you just accept that they're there to win too. Uh, they're just wanting to win with the house. Mm -hmm. So, but there's no reason for somebody that's trying to win against the house to put themselves in a deficit by stacking chips up. I see it all the time. People have whites and reds and they want to get rid of them like they want to lose them and they'll just stack a tower that high and <laughs> especially in the field right no. the field is one of the worst yeah. because usually the dice will hit somewhere in that range but i also see people uh and it's happened to me even recently i'll be shooting the lane will be clear and all of a sudden somebody will put a chips down there for unknown reason <laughs> and it's like oh my gosh i I witnessed many fights because I, I was on a long roll and this moron comes in and puts in a $5 chip right. and messes up my roll right on that corner pass line right by my uh, landing zone and this guy next to me, is he has black chips lined up and he saw that guy put in his late pass bet and sevened out and they just went at it. The pit boss had to separate them, but he was like, was that worth $5, man? <laughs> For you to do that, it, it was crazy, you know? Um, you gotta be aware of that game. Craps is a fast game, fast moving game, and you gotta be aware of everything, right, John? Right, you do. So that's the other thing. If you're at a table where that keeps happening, and a lot of times the dealers won't say anything to these players and you find yourself having to correct players. Uh, but when you get a table like that and you get a lot of stupidity and a lot of crazy stuff going on, that's time to leave the table. Find a different table. Go to a different casino. If the dealers are rude to you, uh, if the dealers aren't responding to you, if they're making the wrong bets, if they're just bad dealers, and you'll get them every once in a while. Or here's another one. If they're a dealer that's brand new, it's not your job to train the dealer. So go find a different table. There's mm -hmm. plenty of tables in Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. And uh, don't find yourself hooked to one table. I gotta be here. Move, even if it's a different table in the same casino, move. Mm -hmm. It, and I have uh, one casino that I go to semi-often and there's certain dealers that I won't even go to the table because all they do is talk stories all day long. They, they miss on the page. You have to remind them to pay you. And the pit boss acts like he doesn't even see it going on. So on those tables, all you're going to do is lose. Go to a different table. Good tip. Good tip. Yeah. I see that a lot. And, and here's the thing, when you live in a place like Vegas, you know you can go tomorrow, you can go next week, you can go whenever you want. You can go at 3 in the morning or 8 in the morning, right? 
But yeah, the people you, you that gotta rub it in for us the, Hawaii guys, right? <laughs> the people that it really affects are the people that know they're only there for four days. Okay. And they're trying to get all their gambling in in four days. That's Maybe nice. not even sleeping. <laughs> yeah. Some people don't even sleep. Uh, some don't take showers. But you know, even downtown, if you're on the strip, if you have to take a cab to a different casino, just move casinos. Because there's nothing worse than being in Las Vegas and realizing you have two days left and you're totally broke and you have no way to get any more money. <laughs> That's the worst feeling in the world. So instead of losing your money at a bad table with a bunch of crazy people, move. Right, if, and, and you know, for my rule is, if you're not having fun at the table, that's not the right table. Craps is fun, it's all about having fun, enjoying, ha having a positive, and I strongly believe if you have positive karma, you know, the, ta the dice will be kind to you, and, and everybody can make money, and everybody can have a um, wonderful time together, but if, if the dealers are, and pit boss are creating that negative environment you know there's nothing you can do but just move right you, move that's the only thing you can control you can't <clears throat> control those guys so that's a great tip john certain uh, pit bosses at certain casinos we won't say their names uh, <laughs> are notorious for continually harassing the shooter about not throwing far enough or they're taking too long to set the dice and if you get that leave the table Leave the casino, yeah. go to a different casino. Yeah, let's talk they about that. They don't want your business. Setting that dice. Um, what is the proper etiquette for setting dice? Uh, How fast should you be setting Setting them? dice is fine. Don't take five minutes to set the dice. <laughs> By that time, the dealers have fallen asleep and the table's going to close anyway. <laughs> so uh, one thing that I do if I'm dice setting that particular day is... There's always going to be a point where the dice are sitting in the middle of the table and the stick man's playing with the dice. And you get a point where you know that's what they're going to slide to you. So as they're sliding them to you, you can see which numbers are where and which ones you need to turn to the way that you want the dice set. Mm -hmm. So that's a, one tip on a fast way to do a dice set. And some of the dealers may not even know you're setting the dice mm -hmm. if you're good enough. But you know, if you're doing a 3V set and you see, uh, see it set where you just need to flip one, one rotation, you got your 3V, then it's that quick. You don't have to set and think about it. You don't have to fumble with the dice and tip it over up and down. I, I watch that all the time and you're just <laughs> like, oh my God, just hurry up, man. Um, because here's what happens. When you take a long time to set the dice, every throw that you throw is like a come out throw because there's so much time in between. So most come out throws will bring a craps or a seven, historically. Mm -hmm. That's when you see a lot of that. So you don't want that every roll. So you wanna be pretty fast in what you're doing. You want your rhythm. Mm -hmm. Most of this is gonna be a rhythm game. Sometimes some of the best shooting that I've done is when I'm the only guy on the table and the stick man is a really good stick man or stick lady and they're sliding those dice as fast as they can, faster than what the guy can pay me. <laughs> and so you, but when you're doing that, you gotta know what your pays are. You gotta know what your next move is before that even happens. Mm -hmm. So, and, and some of the casinos, uh, usually the, the higher price casinos, but you'll find good dealers everywhere. But I noticed on some of the premium casinos where the dealers have to just wait forever to get a job there, those dealers are good. They know what you, you tell them one time what you want. Some of them get mad if you keep telling them. They are, they know what you want. They do it automatically. Mm -hmm. And that makes for a real nice time, especially on a hot roll. You can make a lot of money fast. All right. So do you, I assume you tip these good dealers very well. Yeah, that's, a, that's on the do category. Always think about tipping your dealers. If they're good dealers, if they're fast, if they know their pays, if they're friendly. If they remind you of your missed bets, right? If the, if the pit boss is not harassing you continually, tip your dealers. I mean, it doesn't have to be big. A lot of times I'll just put a dollar on each number for them. And, and 
some of those casinos, you know, because most of the dealers are gamblers themselves, they like to gamble. So you're giving them an opportunity at work to gamble and they love it. Even if it's, if, you know, even if they don't make any money, uh, some of them, when it hits, they'll take it off and put it in the, in their tip bin. Some of them seem like they never take it off. They keep pressing their bets. <laughs> and, and, you know, I've seen them win a lot of money doing that too. Uh, if you want to get kind of on the cheap, throw them, throw them a $1 horn bet. It, they got a quarter on each number. They still make money. Um, or throw them. I always, if I'm betting the all tall small, uh, 30, 40% of the time, I'll put them up there for a dollar each. Yeah, I like to put dollar each on the hardways, um, and you know they love it. I mean, you you create a positive environment, and they start cheering for you. Once you got the dealers on your side, and then it's easier. That now you're more comfortable. Now you can throw at you know your own pace and and not worried about getting harassed. But you know, tipping does diffuse negativity in some some dealers not all of the dealers but well most of them if you're tipping them good uh, and you don't have to throw hundred dollars at them if you're just giving them dollar bets here and there you don't have to do it every time uh, my personal preference is I will bet it before the roll starts because it seems like when I bet during the roll it always causes a seven out <laughs> so if I'm throwing them something during the roll I'm throwing them something to throw in their bin Mm -hmm. So not to bet. I would say drop that in in your bin. Mm -hmm. um, plus, when you tip them, it seems like the pit boss doesn't harass you as much. Go figure. Mm -hmm. And they also, uh, I think, my opinion is, if you're tipping the dealers right, the pit bosses see that. They're going to give you a fair rating for your play. Because there's places you go and you'll play for four hours and they'll give you almost no rating for your, your comps or anything. But when you're tipping dealers and treating their dealers right and you're friendly, they're going to give you a fair rating. They're not going to go overboard, but you're going to get fair rating for what your play is. What about tipping your waitress when you're bringing Always tip beer? the waitress. <laughs> Always tip the waitress. But if you're the next shooter up and the waitress comes around, don't get a drink. <laughs> because <not? laughs> when she comes back with your drink is going to be when you have the dice in your hand yeah. ready to throw and she's going to go did you order a corona <laughs> and you're going to seven out <laughs> that's like filming. clockwork yeah or you can have a buddy uh give them a tip and have your buddy intercept her so that she, she doesn't yeah. uh, you, they've got to intercept her yeah because when she starts once, like if I'm rolling with John and I know John ordered a Corona, no virus, you know, <laughs> I, <laughs> I will intercept the waitress and I will tip, it, tip the waitress for him. That way he's in his zone. You don't want to mess that up because you got to think about it. He is your money maker. You want to protect your money maker and you have all your money on your line. So as a team, as Hawaii Crab Shooters, we want to protect and we know the protocol whenever we see the waitress. So, yeah, be careful when they come in or when they yell that cocktail. <laughs> oh, <laughs> right when you're worst. shooting, right? <laughs> so, and, and the other thing mm -hmm. is, you don't tip them a lot of money unless you're winning. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I, every, if they bring me a coffee, if they bring me a water, I give them a dollar. Mm -hmm. uh, if I'm winning, I'm killing it here, I'll give them five or ten dollars. Because you, it's good karma to kind of share the wealth. If you have a shooter that, sh that has a 50 roll turn and you made five grand off of them, throw them a hundred dollar chip. Right, yeah. I tip, mean, it's a good to tip the shooter. Tip the shooter. They don't, yeah. ex most people don't expect it and it's a nice yeah. benefit for them because most of the time a hot shooter isn't even betting much up here. Right. And everybody <laughs> else is making all the money off of them. Yeah. But <clears throat> at the same time, if you're a hot shooter, don't expect a tip from anybody. Mm -hmm. If you get one, great. Thank them. Be gracious. Other than that, just let it go. Right. Yeah. It, <clears throat> a lot of people in the California, Hawaii people like to tip a lot of people, especially when you, you make them a lot of money on, let's say, on the hard ways when they started with $5 and they're, they come off with 1200 or something like that. And then they'll 
throw me a black chip here, but you know, that's part of the Hawaii culture. We, we like to tip each other and, and have fun and enjoy the game. And tipping each other is just, you know, that's just how Hawaii is, right? We just. Well, yeah, it's just good karma. It's good karma at a craps table. Yeah. You know, uh, if, you're, if you're losing and, and, and they're, they're slaughtering you, one, you should have left by now. But if you're still there, buying in again, then you don't be tipping the dealers. They don't expect to tip at that point. And plus your tip's going to probably lose anyway. So um, <laughs> if you win the all tall small, if, if I bet them a dollar on each, I won't tip them because they made their money off this bet. If I didn't put a dollar each up here and somebody rolls all, then I always give them 30 or $40, maybe more, depending on what I've won up here. And I always give that to the dealers and tell them to drop it. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, they all know. They know the people that tip them. Right. And, and so it's not something you have to do. It's more of a, just a nice gesture because a lot of the dealers make a lot of their money off of tips. Right. They get a flat rate from the casino to work and mm -hmm. then the rest is, of their weekly paycheck is off tips. So okay. it's very important to them actually. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Some of the basics, you know, just try not to cuss at the craps table. Try not to get in fights with people at the craps table. Some, some casinos don't allow you to, to cuss. They'll the get table. on to yeah. you. Um, sometimes it's hard not to cuss, but right. um, you know, at that point you should leave the table. So don't ice the shooter. What does that mean? Uh, you don't want to do something that delays the shooter from shooting their dice. So, especially if they're on the ends, because the ends seem to be more of a rhythm shooting. So you get in a rhythm where you're like every 30 seconds, you're throwing your dice, you're throwing your dice and you get a rhythm going. And that's when you really get hot with your shooting. So if somebody is messing with their bets too much and, or betting weird dollar amounts, that the, that the dealer's having a hard time figuring out what to pay, that will slow the game down and it will ice your shooter. Next one coming out's a, a red, right? So when you're betting, I, I mean, I've seen people bet all kinds of numbers, you know, uh, dollar amounts, but just try to stick to your regular dollar amounts. You can go up all the way to $1,500 if you want, but stay in your regular progression of amounts. Don't get crazy with the $66 bet or the $77 bet because most good dealers will have no problem with that. But a mediocre dealer, it's going to it's going to stump them. They're going to have to stop and break it down into different parts and figure out what to pay you. So or the pit boss would jump in and try to teach the dealer what the payout is right. and what he should have done and that adds to more delay in yeah. there because now he's Teaching them at the craps table, which that's one thing you shouldn't be teaching at the craps table, correct? Well, preferably not, especially on a busy table. And, <laughs> and that's more reserved for off hours. You find a table there's nobody at, go up and ask the dealers, hey, can you teach me how to play? They'll be more than happy to. Mm -hmm. But that's the time to learn is when there ain't a lot of people there and you're not bothering anybody. Too much talking about non crap subjects uh, can, can kill a table. Right. So, <laughs> if you're going to do that, cash out, go to the bar, have a drink, mm -hmm. and talk. Yeah. It, like I said, craps is a fast game, fast moving game. Everything's moving. Everybody's doing something. And if you're not paying attention because you, you know, a, a conversation with your friend right next to him and you mess up everything, you're messing it up for everybody. So, there is a time and place to talk with your friends and have a good time, but at the craps table, you really, really need to pay attention because you know you could cost someone or everyone hundreds of dollars just because you were careless at one second in that game. So craps is a fast game, and you gotta be on it, right? Yeah. So icing the shooter is a real big one. Don't don't do something that's gonna slow the table down and ice the shooter or shave ice shave ice yeah we since hit, we're in hawaii we, we, we're in hawaii. we call it shave ice we call it shave <laughs> ice the shooter john is still kama aina here yeah which means a local <laughs> and uh oh john uh explain to what this uh hand gesture oh we yeah have in hawaii we were talking shooter. about it yeah. uh, 
all the locals here know what this gesture is. But if you live in Germany or somewhere else, you may not know what this is. This is not a gang sign. <laughs> it is a Hawaii culture sign. It's a shaka. It's a it means hang ha loose. Hang loose or aloha. aloha it's a friendly yeah. gesture. <laughs> and most of uh, the people who live here, most of their family photos, everybody's doing this in the photo. <laughs> so it's a real big thing on the Hawaiian Islands. Yeah. Some of the things that you want to do, uh, always remember, if it's a cold table, leave. Go somewhere else. Go play video poker. You're going to lose $20 at video poker. Play video poker for 20 minutes. Maybe come back, check it out. Or just leave the casino and go to a different place. Mm -hmm. uh, because your goal is to win, not lose. If you have a lot of bad karma going on, always leave. Mm -hmm. You know, move, move. Get out of there. Yeah, when Chef Dice comes over, we gamble <laughs> together and he's like, Oh, is it time to leave? I'm like, look, we're going, we're leaving. <laughs> and so, yeah. but we win yeah. because, you know, I mean, it may be some lady, uh, one of the trips, a lady come up, she put her money on the pass line during a roll, right in the way of the guy that was shooting and the guy sevens out. We lost quite a bit of money on it. Mm -hmm. And I said, we're leaving. He's like, what? I said, let's go, we're up, we're leaving. Yeah. Because when you get people like that at the table, she was she didn't even know what she did. But <laughs> the whole game, if she's there, you're going to lose because right. she's doing silly stuff yeah. that hurts you as a player. John is our bird dog uh, when we go to Vegas because he will give us the sign of Let, let's get out of here or it's time to leave because he he is very observant on the table and he he sees all these things that we don't normally see so um, yeah he will give us the sign and we'll we'll walk off that table once and we move yeah. and we go somewhere else and win right yeah <laughs> so uh, the other thing that I've noticed that a lot of times people will yell out turn me off they yell that to the dealer turn me off and I've done it before um, <laughs> you'll see he, something that's not right on me <laughs> but yeah, but when I when I do it loud when the crew's there, yeah. I'm trying to tell them it's time to turn off. Let's get out of here yeah. because they're getting ready to lose their money, and and I've seen something that they haven't seen. Mm -hmm. So that's more of my warning to them. But when you're playing by yourself, when somebody's yelling out, turn turn me off, uh, about fifty percent of the time it's going to come seven. Right. So. Um, you got to so be aware the best of that. Way? What's the best way to turn off your uh, bed? Usually when I turn off a bed, if I'm close enough to the dealer, I'll lean over and say, turn me off, kind of quiet. Or here's another thing that they recognize. <clears throat> if they're there, you get their attention and you say, turn me off. You mouth it, turn me off. And they'll, they'll turn you off, okay? <laughs> but if you're yelling it out, that kind of shave ice the shooter, right? <laughs> Yeah. So mentally, right? Mentally. Yeah. So John has given us a lot of tips of table etiquette, what not to do, what to do while you're on the table. Any last minute words you want to say to their viewers? A quick one quick other thing that I want to cover. Yeah. If the dice come around to you and you do 0.7 out, could be an aberration. If they make their way all the way around and you do 0.7 out again, quit shooting. <laughs> Pass the dice. Don't shoot anymore for the next hour because something's wrong and you're not shooting good. Yeah. So there's no sense in losing your money on your roll just because you think you can roll. Uh, so everybody has a bad day. Right. I've had it. You've had it. Everybody mm -hmm. has a bad day. If you're having a bad day, don't shoot the dice. Make your money off other players. Right. So, and, but a lot of people want to shoot the dice every round. Know when to say when. So you mean we can win without shooting? You can win a lot without shooting if you get a hot roller. <laughs> and, and you know, I've seen people that have done 0.7 out five times in a row, and then they'll roll six to the fire on a fire table. Yeah. So you never know what's gonna happen, but unless you have unlimited bankroll, quit shooting after your f second 0.7 out. Mm -hmm. Don't shoot anymore. Sometimes even your first one. If you're not feeling it, pass the dice. Especially if you have a couple shooters that are really shooting good. Make your money off those people. All right. Great, great tips. Well, thank you, John, for stopping by again during your visit to Hawaii. I'll now be it's back. opposite, right? And um, 
hope to be in Vegas again soon so we can roll together. So thank you all you viewers for tuning in and watching. Thank you John G for being here. And it, again, when you go to the tables, be aware John had shared many great tips. Tips that when I was a beginner and learning the game, I wish I knew because I did piss off a lot of people, not knowingly, and, and you don't wanna be that person. So take some time, rewind the video if you wanna go back and go through all the tips, but it's great tips, it's reality when you get to the craps table, so you'll see it when you ex and experience it when you get to Vegas, so. Any last words, John? No. <laughs> Make some money. All right, have a great day and stay safe, aloha. Loa.